I noticed some errors, or say one error, when I was doing a code check at the end of video 13 after I'd made the video and I wanted to make sure that everything was all okay and I noticed this error when I was doing my code check. I was just reviewing what we covered in video 13 and it's simply one line of code which is out of place. It didn't affect the um, functionality in video 13 when we noticed that we were getting this duplication of the records when we tried to edit um, but it would certainly affect what we needed to do next and that's when we're going into the edit mode to determine whether we want to edit or add a new record. So here's the fix. So that's what it looks like before and we'll fix it straight away to the code the way it should be. So here's what it should like look like. That resolve has been moved from one position where it was after the, uh, the semicolon there to where it should be in that position just there. So that's it fixed and we can move on from there and start to work with the edit mode. So we go into the edit inquiry page.ts and we've added a new variable on line 13 you'll see it here and it's a private variable which is edit mode and we're setting it as a boolean and we've initialized it as false. So that's very straightforward you've seen us do that sort of thing before. So we've got this new variable and now we can use this to control how the uh, application will deal with records. If edit mode is true, i.e. if one of the items on the interface is clicked, one of the previous records, we'll set this to true. And how do we do that? We say that if this ID not equals null, so we've got an ID, inside the code there we're going to immediately set the edit mode you see on line 30 to true. So it knows we've got an ID, there must be an existing record, so we must be editing. So that's very, very clear and I hope you understand what's happening there. Now what we'll do is that when we go to the save, we'll set up this if-else construction, which says that if we are in edit mode on line 39, we will save it. That's going to be updating what we've got, saving the existing inquiry that we've retrieved through the inquiry service and brought into the working object. If it's not in edit mode, we need to add a new inquiry. And that you'll see on line 42, this dot inquiry service, add inquiry. Now this is the line we already had, and we've now wrapped this up inside this decision process, which allows us to either edit or add. So that's the way in which we implement that. So it's really straightforward. So let's do a test run of what we've just completed. You notice I've played with it so that I can make sure I don't make an absolute fool of myself and check that I've worked. So what we're going to do is we're going to check this record here, which should open it up in the edit page. And I'm going to say Mary Dunwoody 4. Why did I choose it? I don't know. I must be confused. Save it and go back here, four. So we've successfully introduced the fact that we've been edited and we've changed that record. So now if we add a new record, it goes to the blank form. So Jim, Save the inquiry, and we've got Jim Wilson. All working now, so Jim Wilson is retrieved. Brilliant. We've implemented that addition, additional functionality that makes us able to ed, edit and save and make sure that we're doing the right things with the records that we've got. I think there's just one thing left to do in this particular video, is that if we um, go to Jim Wilson's page um, and if we save it, I don't think it's convenient that we have to press that back button to get back to the list. So let's automate that function so that whenever any action takes place inside this save, it will go back to the home page. That's what we'll code next. So we're inside the edit inquiry page still. So what we will do is we're going to import the nav controller from my Ionic Angular library. I've got it on my, uh, my clipboard. So there it is, import nav control on line five from at ionic forward slash angular and that means that we're going to have that available to us so of course having imported something in a typescript module we have to inject it so i've now added it as a as a private variable nav control small n of course as a nav controller 
So that's really good, so we've got that. So what we want to do now is that whenever we save a record or add a new one, we'll go back to the home page. And the way in which that works is to call this nav control and use its free. So I've pasted it in here in line 48. This dot nav control, go back, and that gives the sense of navigation so that it will animate it in the correct way to make it look like it's going backwards. And we just set that to true, and that gives us um, a way to go back to the previous page that we were on. We could supply it with a route, which is going to be home, but this works perfectly well because we've only got the two pages in this application. So that should work, and what we need to do is to test it. So let's save the file. So it has compiled successfully. I'll just reload my app because you, you won't have to do that if, you're, if your web server is working correctly. So here we got it. So I'm going to do Jim Wilson. I'm going to edit his record to and save. And it's gone back straight away to the home page, which is exactly what we want. So let's add a new one. And we save the inquiry and it's gone back and you'll see that that's now been edited. That's a really big step forward and really important that you should realise we've achieved an awful lot now and what we're going to do now is just going to improve the facilities and we'll start by giving us the way in which we can um, display all of the fields that are related to each one of these inquiries in the page. And that will give us practically what we need as the first draft.